So the last thing that I want to do before we dive into the rest of the course in our preliminary section is to look at proving things. Um, so this video is going to be a quick uh, discussion on some proof techniques. Um, so we've essentially got a lot of proofs to do in this course. We're going to be attacking them lots of different ways. Um, but most approaches to proving things fall into the same kind of set of categories. So we're back in the same sort of flavor of material as we were when we were looking at logic earlier. But this time we're going to look at our possible uh, proof techniques. So we already came across a technique called the direct proof. Um, and we've actually come across one of the indirect ones already when we looked at the rationality or irrational, irrationality of the square root of 2. So most of the most proofs, or most theorems, sorry, that we have to prove, look like either A implies B, or they might be A if and only if B. So this is the implies version, and this is the if and only if version. So what I'm saying here is that most of the theorems that we're going to come across in this course will either be something like A implies B, where A is some kind of mathematical statement, and we need to prove that it implies some other mathematical statement B, or sometimes it's a stronger condition, if and only if. This is just equivalent to uh, both A implies B and B implies A. So usually, an if and only if proof requires two proofs. Sometimes one of the proofs can be very easy. That's often the case. But whenever you've got an if and only if, you just need to know that you need to be producing two proofs, not just one. Okay, so our direct proof is our first of our proof techniques. And in a direct proof, we start with A... And then we derive B. So when I say start with, I mean assume. So we assume that statement A is true, and show that that means statement B is also true. Also true. So this is a direct proof of A implies B. Okay, so that's the best one. If you can do a direct proof, it's the best style to do because it's just considered good form and usually is the most clear to understand. But often we can't. So the next strategy is contradiction. Okay, so um, that is we contradict A implies B and find, sorry, negate, not contradict. So we assume the opposite of A implies B, and we find a contradiction. And remember from earlier, the negation of A implies B is the same thing as A and not B. So we assume a and negation of B and find a contradiction. Okay, now this is a method that we'll use a lot and we already used it um, in our first proof about the irrationality of root 2. Um, we didn't have an A implies B, we just had a, an A, um, but essentially that was the strategy we used, we did a contradiction. And the final one, when we're dealing with A implies B, is we tr sometimes try to prove the contrapositive. So, remembering that A implies B is the same thing as not B implies not A. So, if we're at attempting a proof by a contrapositive, we assume... Uh, negation of B and show negation of A is true.
Right, so these two proofs, contradiction and contrapositive, as well as having similar names, they are indirect proofs. And these ones are both similar in that in both of them you pretty much start with the negation of B. And so you either show that the negation of B contradicts A, or you show that the negation of B implies the negation of A. Depending on the problem, one or other of these techniques may work out to be slightly better. Um, but both of them start with the negation of B, and that's why they're called indirect proofs. Right, so we're going to test some of these ideas out on a relatively straightforward theorem, just to see how it works, and then we'll call it a day. Right, so here's our sample theorem that we're going to try and prove. Um, it's a theorem about equality of real numbers, and it says that two real numbers A and B are equal, if and only if, okay, so if and only if, keyword, um, for every real number epsilon greater than zero, so there's a quantifier for every, um, it follows that the absolute value of A minus B is less than epsilon. Okay, so we need to break this down into a bit of a structure here. So first thing that we saw, we saw that we had an if and only if. So here's our So this should be therefore equal to a statement, which we'll call statement A. There's our statement A, we'll call that A. And then we'll have statement B, which is a bit more complicated because it's got a quantifier in it, but it's nevertheless the same kind of thing. Here is statement B. For every real number at silent, blah, 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 it follows that a minus b is less than epsilon. So this can be our statement b. Okay, so let's see if we can break this down. We know we've got an if and only if. That means we're going to need to do a implies b and b, uh, b implies a also. So if our statement a is a and b. In fact, let's just make it simpler. a equals b is our statement a. Just to break this down into a slightly less verbose language. Statement B says for every epsilon greater than zero, it follows that the absolute value of A minus B is less than epsilon. Or alternatively, we could write it as in symbols as for all epsilon greater than zero, absolute value of A minus B is less than epsilon. Okay, now we uh, essentially wanted to show that statement A and statement B are logically equivalent. Okay, so we've got that if and only if, which is that same thing as that left right arrow here. So we need to prove that A implies B and, and that's good a number, one, A implies B and two, B implies A. Okay, so for statement number one, this is A implies B. Uh, well, we're assuming A is true. Okay, so we'll suppose A equals B. Okay, so I'm assuming my statement A, and now I'm going to show that statement B is true. Now, absolute value of A minus B is less than epsilon is what we've got to work with for any. This one is easy because a minus absolute value of a minus b is just zero, right? We've assumed that they're equal, so we know the difference is zero. And so no matter what positive epsilon we choose, zero is always going to be less than it. Um, <clears throat> so actually, let's rephrase that slightly. Then the absolute value of a minus b just equals zero, which is less than epsilon for any choice of epsilon. Okay, so no matter what my choice of epsilon is, it's always going to be the, be the case that the absolute value of a minus b is less than epsilon, and so the a implies b part of the proof is actually quite straightforward. Okay, so part two is the other way around. Now I'm going to assume that for every epsilon it follows that blah, 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 um, that absolute value of a minus b is less than epsilon. How shall we go about this part of it? 
Well, the easiest way in this case is actually to attack this using a contradiction. So we're trying to prove B implies A. We'll attempt contradiction. That is, assume B and not A, which is, i.e., we'll assume that for every epsilon greater than zero, absolute value of A minus B is less than epsilon, and also the negation of our statement A, which is that A is not equal to B. Okay, so that's our assumption. We're going to try and find a contradiction to this statement here, um, and it's going to be to find an epsilon for which this is not true. So I'll say let epsilon in this case, I'll just let epsilon equal the absolute value of A minus B. Remember to contradict this statement, we just need to find a single epsilon that violates this inequality here. And I'm going to suggest to you that this is such an epsilon. This choice of epsilon um, is clearly not less than absolute val value of A minus B. Hence, our assumptions aren't true. For every epsilon greater than zero, because absolute value of A minus B is such an epsilon greater than zero, but absolute value of A minus B is not less than epsilon for this choice, and so we have found a contradiction. So we have found a contradiction. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, if it was a little bit much to maybe do in one hit, maybe go over the various steps just a little bit more slowly, just to take into account the overall structure of what we're trying to achieve here. Um, we first took our statement, which was that our numbers are equal if and only if some other thing. We broke it down into our A and B, recognizing we had an if and only if proof to do. Um, and then we went about each individual component separately. The first one we was quite straightforward, we didn't really have much to do. The second one we did by contradiction, we found a particular choice of epsilon that violated our assumptions, and so we, we found what we were after. Once we'd found our contradiction, we'd proven B implies A, and so overall we'd proven the whole theorem. Um, and that's it. Alright, so that's the end of this video, and we'll catch you next time.